Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in to my first ever YouTube video. So today I want to talk about a big topic for the end of a year going into 2019, which is starting before you're ready. So I'm sure there are lots of things that you're going to want to achieve, things you're going to want to try or, you know, develop in the new year. And, you know, this is the time of year where all the pressure is put on us, all the social media posts, all of the magazine articles about new me and how you're going to achieve all these huge things in a year and you're like ah and the pressure can be overwhelming and i personally find for my personality type that this time of year like after christmas and um, we're going into the new year there can be so much pressure and that's something that i find really challenging so i thought it would be helpful to share this video about starting before you're ready and things that have helped me in the last year um, to, to, to do things that I didn't think I could do or things that I was really afraid of. Um, this idea, I can't even remember where I heard it, I think it might have been like Amy Poehler, yes, it's comedian Amy Poehler, she did it, she did this, well it was credited to her quote and it said start before you're ready and I really really liked that because I think that there's always barriers that we can put in our way this video being an example so like i wake up this morning i'm like right i'm going to do this youtube video it's my first ever youtube video oh i'm scared and i wake up and i've got a big i've concealed it well a big spot so I go in the back i can't do this video i've got a spot i've woke up i don't feel good oh i'm just not going to do it i'm not going to do it but the theme of the video you know start before you're ready i'm like yeah I have a spot. I'm a human being. I don't have a perfect set. I may not be the best yet. This is my first video. So I'm going to do it anyway. And I came up here and I started before I was ready. And so I'm quite proud of myself for that. Um, one of the first things that I will say about starting before you're ready is the idea that we're not going to put these big new year goals on ourselves. Like we are not going to put these huge expectations and unachievable, unmeasurable, unmanageable goals in place. So what I would say is the best thing to do is you have like your end destination in mind or where you wanna to get to on your journey right now so far. And then, you know, we're gonna think about the next day, the next week, you know, what, what can we do? What small steps can you take to help you to get to where you wanna be? And I think that that's where me personally, I've fallen down a lot in the past. I've focused too much on the big goal and I've not focused on how I'm going to get there and planned my route on my journey. And that can make a big, big difference. So one of the things that I would suggest is like have that dreamy big goal or it doesn't have to be a big goal, whatever you've got in mind. And then think about what small things might help you to get there. For example, for me, last year, I really wanted to start a counselling course. And the thought of like going back to school financially, um, the time it was gonna take up, the exams, the thought of joining a group and being like judged and marked, all those things totally freaked me out. So what I did was that I planned in some ways that I thought I could help myself get there. And one of those ways was to start volunteering. So I started doing some one-to-one -one volunteering with children, which was great because I thought, hey, I'm volunteering, I'm giving up my time. Even if I'm really bad at this, no one's gonna to be too critical or mean to me. And it gives me an opportunity to do something without any pressure. So yeah, I was even scared to do that, but I started and I met some amazing kids that I got to work with. It literally took up a few hours of my time a week, which is what I had available. I know not everyone's got that, but that was what I had available at that time. And working with those kids one-to-one -one really helped me to realise that A, I could go into a new situation with people that I didn't know in a new structure and I could, you know, help people and I could help myself through that as well. And it gave me the confidence to know that I could work one-to-one -one with people and that I could step into new surroundings. So it gave me the confidence to then go on and sign up to a counselling course and it's been amazing like I'm so so happy that I did that I've met some incredible people I've learned so many new life skills and you know the fact that I put in something before that big goal that was felt more achievable and realistic for me helped me to get there 
and other small things I was doing, like I started sharing some poems on Instagram, finding my voice, speaking out more, you know, not just posting pictures of me, like posting pictures of things like poems that I'd written, things I had to say, things I wanted to share. Started posting a few little little videos, trying some new classes at the gym, and all of those things really, really helped me in small ways to get to that bigger goal. So yeah, first off, smaller, more achievable mini goals on the way up to that big goal. And then secondly, if you're wanting to start something new, reach out to a community or people that are already doing what you're looking to start doing. So for example, if you want to train to become a counsellor, can you go and talk to some counsellors, some different therapists, some people that are lecturing on courses, write down loads of questions, like ask them. And you'll find that most people, whatever sector, um, I found this across lots of different things that I've wanted to do, like if you ask people, oh, can I pick your brains? Can I take you out for a coffee? Would you be able to get share some advice for me? I'm just starting out in this. Like as long as you're not going to like, I don't know, like Oprah, um, most people will love to find the time to have a half an hour chat with you to share what they, you know, what their fears were, what their journey was like. And they will absolutely love to share their story. And I think you'll find as well, which is what I've personally found, is that like we put people on these huge pedestals and we think they're not afraid, they've got it all sorted, like they know what they're doing, they're so confident, their tone of voice is so great, they've got all these thousands of followers. And then when you actually like meet them or get a chance to chat with them or email with them, you know, they have all the same fears that me and you have. Like they started out, they were afraid, they made mistakes, they got criticised. And, you know, they found a way to work through that. And I think that having those sorts of mentors and people that will be really honest with you about, you know, all the great stuff, but also all the challenges they've had, it can be such an amazing help and can spur you on and make you think they're just like me and you. They're no different. They might be further on on their journey, like, but they are still just the same, of us, same as us. So for example, there's this lady called Marie Folio and I've followed her for many years and I always watch her videos as a pick me up and she's got so much great advice. She's so honest as well, which I really like. And I've scrolled like on the top of YouTube, you go on the videos, you scroll right down to the bottom and I watched her first three videos that she ever posted on YouTube, like, I don't know, like maybe like eight years ago. And it was so nice to watch because you know, for me making this video, like I haven't got a hairstylist, I haven't got a set or professional cameras, I've got bells chiming in the background in the village where I live, I've got my cat downstairs making noise. So it's important to remember that everyone started out somewhere and most of us start off doing things and it's quite makeshift and we've not got it all down and I'm saying erm um, too many times and I've got a spot. So, you know, it's just starting somewhere, starting before you're ready. And I think that if you look at those people you admire, you'll find that they have had to go through the same process as, you know, we're all going to go through of being bad until you're good. Like, you've got to be bad until you can be good at something. Like, if you don't allow yourself that space to be bad, then how are you ever going to get to be good? And I know it's kind of like, it's kind of shit being bad at stuff for a while, but equally it's something that we can grow and we can learn so so much from and inspire other people to be brave enough to go out and do the same and then my last like third big point on starting before you're ready is done is better than perfect like whoever made up that phrase has helped me so much because I am a recovering perfectionist like I wouldn't do anything I wouldn't leave the house until I looked perfect. I wouldn't put any kind of work out until I'd like labored over it so long that I'd probably like pretty much destroyed it and hated it because it had to be perfect, which is ridiculous. So I would say like, just go out there and try things and you don't have to be perfect and you never will because none of us are. And putting that pressure and expectation means that you were probably never be brave enough to do anything. Like I wanted to do this children's book. I'd written this children's story and it took me years to be able to put that out. 
because I spent so much time thinking like no one's gonna like it, it's not perfect, I need to write it again and, and then finally I was just like it's gonna eat away at me forever if I don't just do this book and now I've done it, yeah it wasn't perfect but like people all around the world bought copies of that book and you know it wasn't a huge bestseller but it was a great learning process for me and it really taught me that done is better than perfect so just give things a go I'm not saying don't try and make it good don't try and make it great but don't let that get in the way of you actually putting things out into the world because I think that's one thing that I will always remind myself like every going into every new year is that you know you sh we should be able to share and create and try things and have fun and not have this huge pressure and expectation that it's got to be something like huge like I've got to become a YouTube star or I've got to be a best-selling children's author or I've got to be the best counsellor ever to have walked the planet you know it's just that kills um, kills the joy of things and kills the fun of things so I really hope that me talking about this has helped you in some way. I'm wishing you all the best for 2019, the start of 2019 especially. Do not get bogged down in this new me. There is no need for there to be a new you. You are just fine as you are. And remember that and try and have fun when you're trying new things. Start with small mini goals that you can build up and you'll think, wow, I could did that. I can do this. I can keep on building on that and have fun. And I'm wishing you all the best until I catch up with you soon on my next video. Thanks guys. Bye.